Hello, you guys are simplifying rational expressions today. Let's go. Okay, so what is a rational expression? A rational expression is the quotient of two polynomial expressions. And when identifying values for which rational expression is undefined, identify the values of the variable that make the original denominator equal to zero. Okay, I know that's a lot. But first of all, these are what rational expressions look like. 5 over x, x over x squared minus 6, x plus 3 over x minus 7, x squared minus 4 over x plus 2. These are all examples of rational expressions. They're basically like when I have a polynomial for the denominator and a polynomial for the numerator. Okay? So what is your goal? Your goal is to simplify just like you simplify fractions. So let's say I have 9 over 24. Okay, if I have 9 over 24, when you simplify that, what would you divide the top and the bottom by to simplify this fraction? You, was, you would divide it by 3, right? What you're really doing, that you don't know what this you're doing, is you're really splitting 9 into 3 times 3, and you're splitting 8, I mean 24 into 8 times 3, right? And you're canceling out the fact that there's a 3 on top and there's a 3 on the bottom. And that's how you get 3 over 8. So if you divided 9 by 3, you get 3. And if you divided 24 by 3, you would get 8. This is how you simplify a fraction. Okay? So if I have a rational expression like x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 6x plus 9, the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor the top which you don't remember this, but I'm jogging your memory, x squared minus 9 is a difference of two squares. So that's going to be x minus 3 and x plus 3. And then on the bottom, I would do factors of 9 that add to give me 6, which would be 3 and 3. So I would get x plus 3 and x plus 3. So I just rewrote the problem in its factored form. So that now allows me to cross out the blue x plus 3s, and then that gives me x minus 3 over x plus 3. Ta-da! Okay, so this is what we're doing when we're simplifying rational expressions. You're finding the common factor, you're simplifying it, and then you're getting the reduced fraction as your answer. So what does that mean? Okay, so identify any values for which the expression is undefined. So um, first we're gonna simplify. So what we're gonna do is we're going, I'm gonna do it the long way. You're gonna be able to do this the shorter way, but I'm gonna show you the long way so your brain can process what's actually happening, okay? So first of all, 10 over six. What can I divide by 10 and what can I divide by 6 evenly to reduce 10 over 6? 2, right? So if I divide 10 by 2, I'm going to get 5. And if I divide 6 by 2, I'm going to get 3. Keep that in your head. Okay? So then I have x over 8 and then x over 4. Remember the shortcut there is to do 8 minus 4. What's 8 minus 4? 4. 4. So remember, we simplified the fraction 10 over 6. When I simplify it, I'm going to get 5 over 2. And then x to the 8th power over x to the 4th power is going to simplify to x to the 4th power because I did 8 minus 4, which is 4. The long way looks like this. First of all, 10 is 2 times 5. Blue matches with blue. 8x is written all the way out looks like that. And then 2 times 3 is 6 orange matches with orange and then I have x to the fourth in purple I wrote that out the long way so if this is what a fraction is a long way what I can do is I can simplify out the twos and then I have four x's on the top and four x's on the bottom that match and so that leaves me with five times four x's on the top and then just a three on the bottom so my answer is five x to the fourth over three Ta -da!
Okay, define the domain. Now, our problem, let's go back to the original problem, right? The original problem was 10x to the 8th over 6x to the 4th. You want to take your original denominator, which is 6x to the 4th, and you want to set that thing equal to 0. So then you're going to solve for x divided by 6, divided by 6, x to the 4th equals 0. If I take the 4th root of both sides, I get x equals 0. So this is the proper way to define your domain. X cannot equal zero. Okay. Simplify. Example number two. Okay. Two out of six. So identify any X values for which the expression is undefined. What you have to do is you have to factor the top. You have to factor the bottom. Okay. If you don't remember how to factor... Go watch some videos, okay? So I would do x plus 2, x minus 1 for the top, x plus 3, x minus 1 for the bottom. What do we have that matches? The x minus 1, good. So I can simplify those out. And I have x plus 2 and x plus 3. I'm going quick. Okay, so define the domain. Let's remember that our domain was x squared plus 2x minus 3. And when I factored that, I got x plus 3 times x minus 1. This is the bottom. The denominator is what I'm concerned with when I'm defining the domain. So guess what? So x plus 3 times x minus 1 is my domain. So I'm going to set both of those factors equal to 0. x minus x equals negative 3. x equals 1. So when I define my domain, the proper way to write it is to say x cannot equal negative 3 and x cannot equal 1. So remember, when you define the domain, you take the denominator from the original problem and you set the factors equal to zero. Okay, identify any x values for which the expression is undefined. I would pause the video and try this one on your own. First, you're gonna simplify 16 over eight. Do that in your head. What is 16 over eight simplified? Don't do it the long way. I'm about to do it the long way. What? Do that in your head. 16 over 8, what does that simplify to? And don't tell me one half. 8 over 16 would be one half. Okay. Anyway, so 16 over 8. So then you're going to simplify x to the 11th over x squared. If I have 11 x's on top and I have 2 x's on, bo on the bottom... What's going to happen? Okay, I'm going to do it the long way. So, 16 is 2 times 8. Um, I have 11 x's on top and then 8 on the bottom and x, 2 x's on the, the bottom. So, obviously, the 8's are going to go away. And then... Two of the x's are going to go away. So nothing is left on the bottom. All I have is a 2 on top. And 9 x's left because I crossed 2 x's out. So 2 times x to the ninth. Now we're going to take our denominator, which is 8x squared. And we are going to set it equal to 0. I'm going to divide by 8 on both sides. x squared equals 0. So x, And then take the square root of both sides. So x equals 0. So this is my defining the domain. 
I'm going to say x cannot equal 0. Because remember, we set the denominator equal to 0 because we cannot have anything in the denominator that makes it equal to 0 because that would be undefined. We cannot have an undefined function that does not work for us in math. Okay, um, simplify, identify any x values for which the expression is undefined. So 3x plus 4 over 3x squared plus x minus 4. Okay, so I have to factor the bottom. So that's when you do a times c. So you do a times c. Get negative 12, get factors of negative 12 that add to give you 1. And then we would cross some stuff out. So I'd do 1. Uh, if there's nothing left on the top, there's a 1. So 1 over x minus 1. And that's my answer. Now we have to take the denominator and set it equal to 0 to find our domain. So... Our denominator was 3x squared plus x minus 4. I'm going to use the factored version, which is x minus 1, parentheses 3x plus 4. I'm going to set that equal to 0. So that means x minus 1 equals 0, 3x plus 4 equals 0. So x equals 1, 3x minus 4, 3x equals negative 4, divided by 3, divided by 3 x equals negative four-thirds. Ta-da! Okay, so we want to identify, same same thing. The first thing is the top of that, the numerator, is not in standard form. So we're going to go ahead and rearrange the numerator, and we're going to factor the denominator. Okay, so we, we, wanna, we always want the bigger exponent first. So I had to move the negative x in front, and then the positive 4x had to be in back. And then I factored the denominator. So I found factors of eight that added negative eight to, that added to give me negative two. Now on the top, I rearranged the top, but I did not factor the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and factor the top. Okay, so it has a GCF of negative X. So now I can see that, oh my goodness. Those two should cancel out. So I'm going to cancel them out. And so I'm going to be left with negative x over x plus 2. So now we have to define the domain, right? So when I define the domain, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and take the denominator. Our denominator is x squared minus 2x minus 8. x squared minus 2x minus 8. So I have to do x minus 4 times x plus 2. We're going to set that equal to 0. So we're going to get x minus 4 equals 0 and x plus 2 equals 0. So x equals 4 and x equals negative 2. So our domain values are going to be x cannot equal negative 2 comma 4. Okay. Uh, one more example. Identify any x values for which the expression is undefined. Simplify. Okay, so 
um, basically I'm going to rearrange the top again because we don't like it like that. We like it to be in um, standard form. So negative 2x comes first and then the 10 comes in the back. So now I'm going to see if there's a, I can factor the top because the bottom I can't factor it. So I'm going to look for a GCF. Uh, GCF is negative 2 in this case. So now, oh my goodness, look at that. Now that I factored out that negative two, I can see that bada bing, bada boom. So when there's nothing left on the bottom, there's a one, but we know negative two over one is still just negative two. So we're gonna take our denominator, which is x minus five, which is already factored. It's in lowest terms already. I'm gonna set it equal to zero. So I'm gonna get x equals five. So I would say that my domain value is x cannot equal 5. Okay, that's it for now.